Hello, my name's Christian Cull and I'm at the University of Lausanne. Um, it's nice to meet you all. I hope to be able to participate a little bit in, in July's meeting. Um, I'm a human geographer, so probably a bit different from most of you. Um, and I do two things. On the one hand, I'm, I have a carry a sort of a critical social scientist hat. Um, and on the other hand, I'm very interested in more um, the questions of landscape evolution in Madagascar, uh, particularly. And I've been working largely in central Madagascar in the highlands. That's kind of my favorite uh, field site is the, the vast area from Antananarivo down to Fionaranzu and to the west, which is where I've done most of my work. And just to give you a sense of what I do, um, I've done three main things in the central highlands over the last uh, 30 years. One of my big projects was working on fire because it was obvious that fire was a major um, factor in the management of highlands landscapes. And in my research on fire, I asked questions like the ones you see on the screen. Why do people burn? Why are fires perceived negatively? Um, how, what kind of conflicts are there over fire? And you know what kind of implications are there for fire politics and fire management? Um, and I base this on kind of ethnographic fieldwork in a number of rural villages, interviews, archives um, at the at the Malagasy National Archives, um, as well as some French archives, and uh, working basically collaboratively and. Uh, and being inspired by work in fire ecology, archaeology, history, and other disciplines. I've also looked at questions of afforestation because one of the main trends I've seen in the highlands is this arrival of eucalyptus, pine, acacia, and the progressive covering of the vast grassy biome of this region with trees, but uh, exotic trees mainly. Um, and so part of it's been documenting those trends, but also explaining them, explaining the politics behind it, explaining the, the economic incentives for villagers, the land tenure incentives, and, the, and the, the, basically the invasive qualities of some of the trees involved as well. And the other uh, topic that I've worked on a fair bit in the highlands is the question of agrarian change or how, how have the highlands been settled and how do economic, political and other factors change how people use land. On the left is sort of a model that is buried in a very obscure book chapter that I published where I tried to um, represent sort of that colonization of open grassland landscapes by farmers um, uh, and uh, and, but also by institutions, uh, by the government or other institutions that take over those landscapes. And happy to get into that in detail at some point if somebody would like to know more. Um, so that's the uh, end of the, the PowerPoint that, that tries to tell us a little bit about what I do. And I just wanted to answer the questions from, uh, from, uh, from Leanne uh, regarding the um, First question, how does our, my data contribute to an understanding of grassy biome evolution? Well, my data focuses largely on the humans and what humans have been doing and why and how that's led to conflict, how people talk about it um, and so forth. Um, and obviously my, I'm, I'm more of a geographer rather than an archeologist. So my, my, venue, my look, my, my view is more contemporary. But obviously, I'm very interested looking backwards decades, centuries, and even uh, millennia. Um, in terms of Leanne's question two, how can disciplinary understanding be aided by cross-disciplinary engagement? I think all I ever do is cross-discipline. So I, I take inspiration from wherever I can, whether it's historians in archives or archaeologists or and their evidence. And I think I, I'm more of a compiler and synthesizer of evidence from multiple uh, disciplines myself. And so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to cross disciplines at all times. Um, limitations to data within and outside my field, the question number three with respect to inferred Holocene grassland distribution. Um, obviously my field is, my, my personal data and field work is made based on making maps of current um, trees or uh, um, agrarian uh, fields or 
interviewing farmers uh, about their practices. So my data is limited in time. Um, it's limited by the way humans are, how we remember things and the partial knowledge that any human has of the past, of the present, the, the various filters that people have of saying, oh yeah, that species of plant, I've seen it here, but maybe they're not talking about the same species as you are. So there's all the fallibility that comes with and excitement that comes with working with human human uh, data uh, sources. Um, question four, what research questions need to be answered? Well, I think there's a lot of questions about, about historical settlement, historical land use, um, population densities, uh, types of land use, and what really was there before? I mean, there's the big, those are all the big questions. I think I've answered all the questions there, so I'll thank you all for paying attention, and I'll stop the recording right now.